Hello, my name is Kristen Roseberry, a program consultant in the Office of Assessment and Accountability. Welcome to the Inclusions of Special Populations Training 703-KAR-5-070. This is Module 6 of 7 that make up this training series. This training must be completed prior to providing accommodations for any state required assessments. Please ensure to review all seven modules for the complete training. In the next few modules, we will review conditions for specific accommodations on state tests and the rules that govern what can and cannot be done when providing those accommodations as laid out by the inclusion of special populations regulation. On the screen are the most used, but not only accommodations allowed on state tests. Module six discusses reader and scribe. Readers of multiple varieties are available on state testing. Each individual test will have literature that guides you on how each reader is to be provided within the testing environment. Text-to-speech is allowed for students with an IEP, 504, and PSP. A reader can read everything from cover to cover in the assessment to the student. If the student requests to read parts independently, that is allowed, and the proctor must stop reading until the student requests it again. All students have the right to grade instruction, so giving an accommodation does not relieve the teacher, school, district of the responsibility of giving the student top-notch instruction. Some other highlights. A reader must always watch inflections and emphatic speech when reading. This is a particular concern for human readers. The job of the reader is to never lead a student to an answer. Must have documentation over time that with intervention and high quality instruction, the student is still unable to access the reading assessment. The goal of any accommodation should be to phase it out over time and grow a student to be independent to the greatest extent possible. Here's more guidance for what a reader may do. Keep in mind these rules apply to any reader in any testing environment. Any reader must read the directions, prompts, situations, and passages as they are written in the test. A reader may not use or provide any additional information even if requested by the student. A reader may reread any part of the test to the student only after the student requests it for students taking the general assessment. If a student is taking the alternate assessment, they are currently scripted assessments. Test administrators may determine when a student is not focused and may reread at any time. A reader may not point out parts of questions or tasks skipped by the student. A reader may read individual words or abbreviations mispronounced by a text or screen reader if specifically requested by the student. A reader may not lead a student to an answer. Remember, no emphatic speech when reading. These rules apply to any state test given in any format and whether the student is taking the test online or paper and pencil. Now let's look at some ways to prevent allegations or best practices to engage in when providing a reader. A reader should never guide or direct a student to correct response. When reading to a student, the test administrator should never change test items or answer options, even at the student's request. A reread may be provided at the request of the student. The only time the test administrator is permitted to reread something without a student request is for the alternate assessment. A scribe is an accommodation for students with verified disability that impacts writing. Keep in mind these rules apply to any scribe in any testing environment. A student cannot be given a scribe just because they have bad handwriting or because they write slowly. There must be documentation of the disability's impact on the student's writing, showing they are performing significantly and consistently below same age peers. A scribe merely writes what the student says. The student must remain the sole creator and editor at all times. A district has discretion of who can serve as a scribe, but peer tutors are not allowed. Any person not working in a certified position who is providing assistance shall read and sign a non-disclosure agreement provided by the department. A scribe cannot be used as a replacement for writing instruction or assistive technology. For an EL student with a PSP, a scribe shall be provided if the student has not reached proficiency in the annual English language proficiency assessment. How a scribe records answers for a student may be different from one state test to the next based upon the medium the test is being given. This will be covered for each test within each test literature for each specific test, but the role of the scribe never changes. A scribe must, regardless of testing format, record word for word what the student says, written onto paper or typed into the online platform. 
format, capitalized, and punctuate as directed by the student. Given the written or typed product to the student to edit or, or revise. Not alter, edit, or revise a student's own ideas, revisions, or edits. These rules never change whether a test is given online or paper and pencil. Now let's look at some ways to prevent allegation or best practices to engage in when providing a scribe accommodation. A scribe should only record the exact information that a student provides. All answers must be directed and guided by the student at all times. A scribe should only provide the writing support to a student unless they have additional accommodations permitted on the test. For example, the scribe cannot read a response back to the student unless that student also has a reader on their plan. Check for understanding number six. Which of the following is not a role of the reader? A, reading the test book cover to cover. B, pointing out parts of questions or tasks skipped by the student. C, reread any part of the test if the student requests it. D, read individual words or abbreviation the text or auto reader mispronounces. The answer is B. As a reader, you are not allowed to point out mistakes or errors the student has previously and is or actively making. Your only, allow, your only allowed job is to read the test booklet for the student. Number two, if a student does not understand a word or phrase in the passage or question, is it okay to summarize or explain that text to the student in a language they understand? A, yes, if the student asks you to explain it. B, always yes. C, yes, if they have a reader. D, no, paraphrasing is not an acceptable accommodation. The answer is D. Paraphrasing is not an acceptable accommodation. It is never okay to summarize or explain anything within the assessment portion of a testing booklet to a student. Number three, a student is provided a reader accommodation in their IEP. The test administrator is reading the test. The student requests that the reader to reread the passage and define a word that is not understood. Is this allowed? A, yes to both. The student has reader and paraphrasing and rereads are allowed. B, no to both. Rereads are not allowed. C, yes to the reread. The reread is allowed, but paraphrasing test content is never allowed. No, D, no to the reread. Rereads are not allowed, but the paraphrasing is okay. The answer is C. The student is allowed to request a reread that may be fulfilled. However, test content, even with a paraphrasing accommodation, may not be defined, summarized, or changed under any circumstances. Number four, who cannot serve as a scribe even if they have received the inclusions of special populations training? A, special education teacher. B, peer tutor. C, substitute teacher. D, counselor. The answer is B. The regulation specifically bars peer tutors from being a scribe. Which of the following must a scribe do to ensure they prevent an allegation? A. Record only the exact information a student provides in the answer box. B. Reread the answer the student provided and require the student to provide all edits to the answer. C. Never read the answer back to a student under any circumstances. D. Correct all mistakes within the written answer for the student. E, both options A and C are correct. The answer is E. As a scribe, your only job is to record the exact information provided to you by the student within the answer box of the test. The student must direct or provide any edits. A scribe also cannot read the answer back to the student. This concludes module six of seven of the Inclusions of Special Populations training. Please review all module, all seven modules to complete the training. If you have any questions about anything we discuss, please feel free to contact our office by emailing dacinfo at education.ky.gov or by calling 502-564-4394.